Today we're talking about how I grade my Sigma FP Cinema DNG footage. But first, if you're new to the channel, my name is Anson, and on this channel we talk about filmmaking, specifically filmmaking gear, tutorials, and a look at the projects that I'm working on. And so if that's something you're into, consider subscribing. Now before I go any further, I do want to give the disclaimer that I'm not a professional colorist. This is just how I've come to grade my Sigma FP footage. But again, I do want to give the clarification that I am not a professional colorist. And so please just be kind, be kind and rewind. I don't know why that made sense to say, but I said it. Here we go. So diving right in, we're gonna go into DaVinci Resolve and we're gonna take a look at my color grading process with this footage. Now I will say as far as the raw tab, really the only things I'm doing is adjusting exposure or potentially the color temperature. If I've just so happened to not shoot in the right white balance, I will change that here. And so that's really all I'm doing. I'm not actually changing the color space in the raw tab, but that's something that actually has changed in the last year or so, is I no longer shift this over to the Blackmagic Film color space, I'm using just the normal Rec. 709 sRGB color space and using another color space transform that we'll talk about here in a minute in my node tree. So with that, let's go over to the node tree and talk about the first node that I'm using. And that is a color space transform. And specifically, I'm taking it from the native color space that the Sigma FP shoots in and changing it over to a Rec. 709 color space. But more specifically, I'm converting it to a Cineon log profile because in the second node, I am using a LUT that caters to this specific log. And so that's what I'm doing when it comes to color space transformation in the first node. So with the second node, that's where I'm putting this film look LUT. If you go over to the LUT area built into DaVinci Resolve, there is a collection of film look LUTs, and I'm specifically using the Kodak 2383 film look. Now, there is three options when it comes to this film look. There is one that's a little bit warmer, one that's a little bit more neutral, and one that's a little bit more blue. And so depending on the white balance or maybe the environment of what I'm shooting in, I will use one of those three. Generally speaking, speaking, I'll stick to the neutral option, but that is what I'm using in this node is the Kodak 2383 LUT. Now that we have the color space transform and the LUT applied, what I'm doing in the third node is adjusting exposure even more, fine tuning the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. Now this is where I kind of deviate from what you're supposed to do properly when you color grade, because properly what you're supposed to be doing is taking your highlights to that top line of your parade scope. But honestly, I'm probably keeping that somewhere around the mid 700s in that line versus going to the very top. And so that's what I'm doing is I'm actually underexposing some of my highlights to create more of a softer look to my footage. Now that's more to taste, but that's usually what I'm doing. Now from there, I'll adjust the midtones to offer some contrast and then play around with the shadows. Now the fourth node is all about color. I often do color correction here. I will also go into the RGB mixer and raise the saturation a little bit for both the reds, the greens, and the blues. I generally kind of keep this around 1.5 for each. But again, this is not something I hold to religiously. It really just depends on the footage. If I want something a little bit more flat, maybe a flatter look, I'll keep these all at one. If I want something that's a little more saturated, I'll go about 1.5. I used to go all the way up to two for the RGB mixer but I've since kind of grown tired of that look as well. And so with that being said, I will generally stay around that 1.5, if not go below that, even all the way down to just one for everything. And so again, that's what I'm doing with the fourth node. It's all about color, whether it's color correction or potentially just raising the saturation. Now, everything else is up to skin tones and maybe a more stylized grade. And so with the next node, I will qualify my skin tones. Now, once I've qualified the skin tones in this node, I will use my color wheel to make adjustments. I tend to keep my skin tones at the top or right side of the skin tone line when you're looking at vector scopes. So that's what I'm doing in this node is adjusting skin tones.
And then beyond that, I have two nodes that are layered, one to carry over the skin tones below, and you can see how I've attached it. And then the node on top is doing just more grading, maybe something a little bit more stylized, depending on what I'm going for. And then beyond those layered nodes, I'm adding a layer mixer to go all the way out to the output. And so again, that's how I color grade my Sigma FP footage. If you do have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If there's anything that you may offer as advice, if you are a colorist and you're just going crazy and all your spidey senses are just going everywhere, let me know, give me some feedback. Again, I'm not a professional colorist. If I'm doing something wrong, please tell me, but be nice about it, be kind. Again, be kind, rewind. That's our motto for today. Be kind, rewind, RIP Blockbuster. And so that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a like. And if you're digging the overall content from the channel, consider subscribing. As always, thank you for joining. Go and find your journey. Go embrace life. Stay safe. Be happy. Support each other. Wash those hands. And I'll see you here next time. Peace.